Hello and everyone, so welcome back to my channel. This is The Method on Speaking. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today we are talking about the top 10, uh, actually no, the top 11. Sorry, I just couldn't make my mind. The top 11 most effective and better designed helmets in history. Mobility, ability to breathe, ability to hear, vision, overheating, all of these things need to be taken into consideration. So let's get to it. All right, at number 11, we are looking at the Roman Montefortino helmet. Now, this was a very popular helmet and it was used for a very long time by mostly the Roman Republic, but also the Roman Empire, contrary to what a lot of people think. It was designed and created during the Republic and it was mostly made of bronze, although generally speaking, copper alloy, as it is probable that some helmets would have been made of something closer to brass but still bronze would have been the most common alloy. Now the helmet is good because it protects your head, but it also allows you to breathe. It avoids overheating and your hearing is not impaired. Now on the other side of the continent, still scoring at number 11, we also have a very similar design in China during the warring state. So the sort of warring state bronze helmets. So very similar, so they share number 11. At number 10, we have the Roman Colus. So again, we are in Roman times, but the helmet now, it's starting to cover more of the wearer's head. So increased protection, but still pretty good. Mobility, ability to breathe and vision, those haven't changed. These were also copper alloy. I would like to put as well the Illyrian type helmet, which is a Greek kind of helmet, together with the Roman Colus, so still the number 10. The Illyrian was a very old design, we're talking about 8th century BC. It wouldn't really be better than the Montefortino in my opinion, but in its later versions it would also cover the entire head and the neck. That's why it scores a number 10, considering the later versions. And number nine, we've got again a Greek helmet, and this time it's the Corinthian helmet. Now, I really like the Corinthian style, but this is, again, personal preference. I think it's kind of difficult to choose between the Roman Colus and the Corinthian helmet, and the only reason why I'm putting it here is because of the extra protection that the helmet gives to your face. The Romans were aware of this kind of design and still chose to go with a different and more open version. So consider this placement with a pinch of salt. But at number eight, we go again back to the Romans, and this time it's the Imperial Gallic, specifically type H. With number 11, 10, and nine, these are very, very close calls, but with number eight, I believe we have a real improvement. By this time, the Romans had mastered iron working, so these helmets were mostly made of iron. First and foremost, the helmet is better shaped. It protects even more as it extends behind the neck, which the Romans understood was an area that in a very close quarter combat situation with big shields would be targeted a lot. Also, some variations of the Imperial Gallic have reinforcements, both in the brow and the front, namely the brim, but also on the top sometimes with cross sections. At number seven, we are already entering the Middle Ages. Now we've got the conical helmet or nasal helm with male coif. These two should be joined. Um, already we are in the 11th century, for example, the Normans, Battle of Hastings, 1066. We see a lot of these helmets and they continue to be used for quite a bit of time before they start to become old fashioned and they are substituted by better helmets, which we will see on this list. The helmet is good because it has a conical shape, which helps uh, deflecting blows. It protects the center of your face and paired together with a male coif, it provides very good protection. Now, if this was without the male coif, then it would be a different situation, but considering them conjuncted as we normally see them used anyways, then this is a excellent and multi-layered defense system that definitely earns number seven. Now, at number six, we are still in the Middle Ages and we are looking at the kettle hat, of which I have a very nice replica here that I'd like to show you. Kettle hats, there are quite a lot of versions. Um, some have longer and bigger brims and some have got smaller profiles, like for example, the one that I own. But the kettle hat is a good helmet for quite a lot of reasons. Reason number one, it protects the upper part of the head, which is where most attacks will come naturally. And the brim allows to cover part of the face without having to actually cover it, physically cover it. The extending brim would block attacks that could otherwise reach the face. Now these helmets, of course, allow you to breathe. They still give you excellent visibility. And in the same point of this list, still number six, we've got the sort of helmets used by the Song and Yuan dynasties in China, which really looked like kettle hats anyway. So this is not peculiar or specific to Europe. Now for number five, we are still in Asia, in the Far East, and we're looking at the Samurai helmet or the Kabuto. Now the, there are a lot of versions of Kabuto. Now personally, my favorite, and I've tried and owned quite a few, protects you and it's very movable because of the fact that it has 
lots of different layers as you can see particularly on the back it protects the sides very well yes you can wear a mask with it i'm not really sure about the actual protective capabilities of the mask is very well made and these helmets were made of metal very important to say again iron uh, for the high end you have steel and in china for the jin dynasty we also have a very similar helmet similar to the samurai style so i'd like to mention that one too since normally chinese helmets are not as famous but there are a lot and number four, we have the Great Helm. And I'd like to underline one thing, though. There isn't one specific and single kind of Great Helm. This is typical for the knights, of course, or men-at-arms, but there are a lot. In fact, the sort of Great Helm that I'm really meaning when I talk about this is the later version, the one that has a sugar loaf shape on the top, which, again, helps encouraging blows to basically go away and disperse the energy of the impact. The flat-top helmets, although they were used for over a century, they didn't really allow for that. Now, of course, if you're mounted and you're charging towards infantry, most likely they won't reach the top of your helmet. So that could be one of the explanations why flat tops still were used. But definitely, as we move forward in time, the flat top design is discarded for a just better design, which is a sugarloaf one. So that is the kind of great helm that scores in here. And of course, as we know, great helms become bigger and bigger as they start being used in conjunction with iron caps or secret helms, double layered protection again, and it would allow you to remove the great helm if you needed to breathe a bit more. Now, of course, the great helm increases protection, but decreases the ability to see to a certain level and the ability to breathe. It is a factor that needs to be played in, and great helms usually were used during charge. So you charge, you use it because you want to maximize your protection, but on the other hand, and possibly if you started fighting and fighting and fighting eventually you would take it off and number three we have got the bassinet now the bassinet it's just a better version of the great helm there is no questions about it because it gives you everything that a great helm gives even more for example depending on what kind of visor you use but the most common one would be the most famous one would be the hound scowl the sort of muzzle pig faced helmet which has the shape it has because it's designed to be good against arrows because if an arrow hits a flat surface, it will hit it very powerfully. But if it's hitting pointy surface, then it's a lot easier that the arrow will be deflected. So it is a better helmet. It still gives the same sort of visibility than a great helm. And it also allows you, when needed, to lift or hinge up the visor. So you don't actually have to remove the entire helmet like you had to with a great helm this time. You just lift up the visor. And that is a great technological development from a great helm so and of course by this time although some iron helmets were still used for example up to the times of the battle of Agincourt, still high-end armor would have been good quality steel now as we move to number two we have got the salet or sale however you want to pronounce it now this is a absolutely gorgeous badass looking but these are not the reasons why it's here um, it's because it was a ubiquitous helmet, this helmet, particularly in Germany. In fact, most people associate this kind of helmet with the German style of armor, the Gothic style, but actually the helmet was invented in Italy. This is a German style with a long elongated and sometimes segmented. Well, history tells us why the salad is better than a bassinet, in my opinion. The elongated tail is a better protection for the base of your neck than male, which was usually what was used together with at least the sort of bassinets that I was mentioning today. Now, of course, you also have the great bassinet, which has plate protection for, thro for the throat, but it's not as mobile and as comfortable as a salad. A salad provides with plate defense for the base of the neck, and it also allows you to personalize and customize the experience depending on your needs. You can wear it on, it on its own, leaving the lower part of the face exposed. For example, if you're doing some sort of patrol or you're in a situation at camp that you, you still want to have your helmet on, but you don't think you are at risk. But when you want full protection, then you wear it together with a bever. The bever protects you with plate very well. It protects the lower part of the face, it protects the throat, and so it gives a more complete protection. Now, before talking about number one, I have an honorable mention, and that is the frog mouth. Now, the reason why the frog mouth is not on this list is because it's too much of a specialized helmet. So it's a helmet that was used for jousting, but it's my frigging favorite. So I wanted to mention it. So it's great because it's probably the most protective helmet ever. And in some of its forms, it's like ridiculous, like the 
sort of frog mouths that was made for that were made for kings, for example, it was so thick that nothing would go through those. But of course, you lose mobility, you don't breathe well. It's not a helmet that you would wear on the battlefield. It's not a well helmet that you're supposed to wear for very long. It's a helmet that you wear when you want maximum protection. You don't even need to move your head because you're going straight because that's the joust anyways. It's an awesome helmet, so big thumbs up for the frog mouth. And let's go to number one. And at number one, we've got the Armet. Now this for me is the best design ever. It is just amazing. The Armet has all the advantages of the Salad, but it also allows you to have even more protection, particularly if you use the wrapper, which is a an Italian invention that allows you to choose if you want even more protection, which gets it rather close to what you get with a frog mouth. And it's still something that you can remove if you need to. It has a lot of different mechanism to open it up. You can open it completely or you can just lift up the visor. By this time, it would be definitely high quality steel. So this is the best helmet. It just has the best of all worlds, in my opinion. And it was, as we know, the favorite of many professional knights. And this concludes this list. But of course, let me know what your opinions is in the comment below. I really enjoy reading your comments. And sometimes when I read your lists, they even make more sense than what I make. So I learn from you and I appreciate that. But this is what I think. This is my top 11 list. Let me know if you agree. And I hope, most importantly of all, that you enjoyed yourself watching this video. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, the Metatron spread his wings. Goodbye.